Hey guys, welcome back to our chicken coop build. In part one, we established our layout with our batter boards and our string lines. And now that we have all of our perimeter established, we're going to plumb down from our nice layout onto the ground so we can start digging holes for our foundation. So you see me here holding what's called a plumb bob. I'm just holding that exactly where I want each footer to be. And once it stops wiggling around, I set a little nail in the ground and then I can spray paint around a sauna tube for where I want to dig. So while we're digging here, um, I'll just quickly describe what I ended up doing. I had some leftover of this rebar um, mesh. Uh, so I just cut this up and then rolled it into a shape that would fit into the sauna tubes, um, tied it together with some rebar ties, and I feel like this is gonna be completely sufficient for this kind of project. Um, didn't need to spend extra money on big rebar. So there's an example of how I set that in there. So here we're leveling off our forms and you can just see I'm just using the ground um, to pinch, press fit those sauna tubes in. Um, there's no need to get too fancy with this. They just need to be level because there's going to be posts coming off of these. All right, so we're finally about to do concrete. I did these four holes because they're the easiest and then I'll do the complicated ones after I've gotten used to the concrete. All I'm doing is I'm using this for my rebar. Um, it's just a chicken coop. So it's better than nothing. Real simple, just setting this down in here and then uh, gonna pour our concrete, try to get it pretty level. Um, these four holes are good practice holes because it doesn't matter the height that we achieve on these. We're just gonna try to keep them level um, because posts come off of these ones and then those four on that side will be piers that beams go straight off of. So those ones will be a little bit more complex in the setup, um, but this will get me used to the concrete process. I'm gonna use a drill. I hate mixing concrete no matter what the method, um, but I think I hate this the least. So we'll try this method and then I'll figure out my ratio of water to concrete in a five gallon bucket and be a little bit more confident when I move on to the more complex one. Okay, so we got those four footers poured. It went well. Um, there weren't really any hiccups on that. Uh, definitely a lot more confident with the concrete after finishing those four. And I'm gonna go ahead and tackle digging out some of these holes. Uh, probably get these sauna tubes on tomorrow. Um, again, these ones are gonna be a little more complex. I have to actually get them all to be level with each other because beams are going right on them. So, let's see if I can break my back. I wanted to show you what I'm doing here when I'm trying to put the sauna tube in. Because um, it's so small, I don't really want to get a bunch of wood out to brace it. I'm going to try to use the ground, just like I did in the small ones, to be the brace so it stays exactly where I put it. So I'm just laying it on top of my rough hole and I'm taking a shovel and I'm scraping what's needed to get it to go into the ground, but nothing more. And then I can get a pressure fit into the ground. So this one here is about four inches or so into the ground and it press fit in there. And I think I won't need to brace that. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of volume above the ground, um, so we'll see once I get it just how I like it, um, but I might risk not bracing that because it's pressure fit into the ground so good and at least four inches, maybe even more on the high side. 
um, might be able to get away with not putting a bunch of two by fours and stakes up against this. All right, so today we're trying to do the other four footers, uh, two of which are tall. Um, so it's gonna be a lot more concrete today. So we'll see if my back can handle it, but I'm trying two buckets, mix them up at a time and then walk over there. Um, this is my only flat spot. So again, that's why I'm mixing over here and having to walk it. Uh, I did not support these sauna tubes. So you can see that they're raised up out of the ground. I measured down from my pink string lines that I, I put back um, just to an arbitrary number and then made all four be that same thing. And that's why so much focus in the beginning, getting the string lines perfect is all paying off right now. Um, so that will be the shed and coop combo and it'll be nice and level over there. So now let's go pour our concrete. <laughs> if you're mixing in a five gallon bucket, it really helps to find on your, on your first few pours, figure out how much water you have to put it at the beginning. Definitely put water first. If you can figure out that level every time, then you know, okay, you can add about half the bucket of concrete Mix that in initially. Don't try to go all at once. And then you can top it off to almost a full bucket. And I've gotten to where my system keeps, I barely have to play with it at the end. I haven't had to add water. Just kind of get close to the top, maybe add a tiny bit more concrete until I get the slump I want. Turned out to be a wet, very yucky day, which is not great for concrete mixing, but here we are. And these things are made of or cardboard. Yeah, not ideal. But like he was saying, this section right here is what's gonna make up the shed portion and the indoor chicken roost area. And then all of this area here is going to be the outdoor run with a roof over it for shade. Finally got all the footers poured. We'll come back to these when they're cured and put post brackets on them. So our concrete's set up now and I'm removing the sauna tubes and we're going to use our layout for the final time. Um, that's why it's so nice to have it set up this way with batter boards. You can remove the string lines, pop them right back up, get exactly the layout that you had previously. And uh, so we'll plumb down for our final time now from our string lines onto our foundation. And you can see with all that work, you can see how nicely it ended up being in the center of each foundation. It would um, be okay if it was off a little bit, uh, but the more work you put in in the beginning, you end up dead center. So now we're gonna drill our holes into our foundation. Um, we're gonna be putting wedge anchors into these holes and then you tighten a nut down and that's what holds our post brackets onto these piers or foundation. We got a big old bit here on a hammer drill it's not very easy to do something like this unless you've got a big drill. Um, it has to be a hammer drill. Um, I'm using some bolts that I had from that tree fort project. Uh, so I'm just reusing the same, same ones. I had to buy a little bit extra, but that's why I'm using such a big one. You could get away with half inch on these four by four post brackets, but this is a five eighths. I've already done, uh, pre-drilled a little bit here with just a smaller masonry bit because this bit is so big, it has a tendency to want to walk on you and all that work to get these precise locations, I don't want my bit to wander off as I try to start. So this should help us stay centered.
So you want to make sure you clear the whole of all the concrete dust. Um, so when you see me coming up out of the hole a few times, so I'm just trying to pull that dust up. You could also do this with the shop vac. We actually had a funny thing happen where I came out um, a few days later and was ready to start putting the bolts in and there was ice in my holes. So I'm so glad I checked the depth because um, I would have driven a bolt in and not been able to get it back out um, and it wouldn't have been to the depth that it needed to be. So just make sure before you beat those big bolts in that you actually have that extra depth that you need. Uh, you don't want to have them end up being proud. So the way we're mounting our post brackets to our foundation is with a product called a wedge anchor. So this one's by Simpson. And what you do is you beat these down in your hole with a hammer. Make sure you already have your washer and your nut on. Make sure that your nut is beyond the top of this because your hammer could deform that and you might not be able to get a nut on. So washer and nut on before you hit this with a hammer. So then you drive that in and then when you tighten the nut, this thread gets pulled up. This gets driven down over the part that's thicker at the bottom. And that's why it's called a wedge anchor. It just wedges itself into the concrete. It expands as you draw it up with the nut. And that'll hold it down here. We get a ton of wind coming up this hill. And that's why I kind of went what seems to be overboard for a chicken coop. Um, but my chicken coop's just gonna end up in the woods 100 yards over there if I don't do this kind of system. So now I'm going around, I'm beating the brackets in, but I'm just leaving them taut and just kind of to where I can still shuffle them around. There's enough wiggle room within the slot that they provide you. Um, I brought my beams out so that before I tighten the brackets down, I could get um, everything set up and start pulling some diagonals, make sure this was all square uh, before I go wrenching on those nuts and can't move anything after that. So right here, just confirming everything. We're taking some diagonals. Carly's checking it. it's level. It's perfectly level. Our diagonals came out really nice. And uh, once we were happy with all that, we kind of did some pencil marks around our post brackets so that while we took those beams off, if anything shifted, we could put it right back uh, and then just snug those nuts right up and that's our foundation system that we've come up with and we're pretty happy with it. Everything feels real solid. And for our next video, we'll be starting framing. Framing's a lot more exciting. Get to see things come on off the ground real quick. So I hope you stick with us and uh, we'll get this chicken coop built.